Uh, so in the show, you play the legendary hero, All Might. Do you have any personal heroes that have influenced you like All Might? Hmm. Let's see. Uh, I, what's weird about the whole like fan culture thing to me is that when I grew up, I didn't have anything, like any person I was really obsessed with. I guess if I had a hero in my life, it was kind of my dad. And he was, he worked a lot. He worked really, really hard. And I get that from him. Like I'm a, a really terrible workaholic. But he worked for NASA and he worked for IBM and he was a, like a master at uh, database programming. So to him, like my father working for, you know, the company that sends people into space was the coolest thing ever. Nice. Okay. Cool. Good luck. I promise. <laughs> All right. I already said my dad, but he works for NASA, so you got nothing. So, uh, how do you prepare to play a new character like uh, Izuku? Um, especially with the advent of the broadcast stuff, uh, getting information can be pretty hard. Uh, but I try to just do as much research as I possibly can. I watched the first couple of sub episodes as they were coming out. I tried to look at a little bit of the manga just to see, you know, where it was headed. I don't like to spoil myself too much, but I do like to sort of see where the narrative is headed. Um, so for, for my hero especially, uh, I just sort of researched anything I could get my hands on. It's yeah. still very, you know, sort of a fledgling uh, property, so uh, there wasn't much, but there is definitely, I know where the story is headed enough now that I can make some pretty precise choices about it. Sure. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, let me get a couple nerdy questions. So, um, at maximum one for all power, who do you think could actually defeat All Might? Oh, wow. Wow. Just out of anything? Uh, Vegeta. Uh, <laughs> Prince of all Saiyans, yeah, of course. Yeah. Because he can fight for longer than three hours. Yeah, true. He can fight okay. for uh, 70 episodes yeah. worth uh, without ever having to power down. <laughs> Not he even can even die a couple of times yeah. and come back. Still kicking. And no lower volume either. Yeah, just constant <laughs> yelling. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... Justin, you have a lot of uh, anime under your belt, Garo, One mm -hmm. Piece, video games. How do the uh, processes from one project to another differ from one another? Um, anime itself is, is very stringent. You know, they have a process that uh, you follow, and, and uh, you basically have all the lines there written for you, and you record them in order. For a video game, it can be a little more touch and go. Uh, often you don't have the uh, benefit of visuals, to go along with it, so you have to make often stronger or more ridiculous choices to uh, because you don't know exactly what they're aiming for. Um, it's just a difference of, I think, with anime, you can always uh, at least have a body to put your voice and, and match it to. Um, with video gaming, I don't want to say it's more imagination required per se, but just a little more like visualization in your mind. It definitely requires a good director. Mm -hmm. you know, a it's kind of luxurious, actually, to work in anime, uh, even though even though sometimes anime voice actors can be looked at as sort of a almost a second class citizen to people who do prelay and dub, and that's you know prelay and, and video game animation, although it's changing rapidly. There's something gorgeous about being able to have the headphones on, and depending on the order in which you record it. If you record it later, you get to hear everybody. If you record earlier, you don't get to hear as many other actors, but you do get the music and the sound effects in your ear and you get to look at a character's face and it becomes uh, a challenge. And the only thing that makes anime sound even remotely awkward is that you just have to fit your words into those mouth movements that are specific. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it's like just an awesome uh, yeah. process. Nice. Uh, what is the hardest voice to do for an extended period of time? You got Vegeta, you got Kuwabara, you got... In a way, it depends on what they're doing. Uh, the, the, it's the weirdest one, the, the, the only character I've really lost my voice on, and I had to go to the doctor, I had to go to like an ENT to figure out what was going on, is I was doing the voice of Nappa. And, uh, because Nappa has his voice, and it, all, it sounds really weird, and you have to, I had to tighten my neck muscles so much that I actually like, like kind of sprained my neck muscles wow. sort of doing because wow. you had to hold it in this one place and uh, otherwise I guess working on Dragon Ball all these years just kind of has given me a, a layer of Kevlar on my uh, vocal sure. cords. Nice. 
So, uh, Justin, what is like the ideal dream character for you to play? Oh my gosh, uh, y you might be looking at him. I think <laughs> Izuku is an amazing character. Uh, there's been so much to dig into already, and you don't often uh, get characters in, in anime that are so rich and so fleshed out. You know from the beginning exactly what Deku is about and exactly what he wants to do and how he's going to do it. Um, you also know that he, he's not, you know, he's trying his best despite the fact that everything is against him. I think he's just a remarkably well-rounded character and it's, it's been such a privilege to play someone like him. Uh, well, I, I think it's, a, it's interesting the similarities uh, uh, that My Hero Academia has to some other like, shoju, like uh, shonen kind of anime, but yet it stands, it stands on its own because unlike One Piece where the main character is an idiot or, you know, Dragon Ball Z where the main character is an idiot. And I'm, not, I'm just being honest, like, Luffy is pretty, like, yeah. he, he's, yeah. <laughs> like he's a happy-go-lucky idiot. And yeah. so is um, Goku in Dragon Ball. Uh, when I'm working on this show, it doesn't feel like I'm working on anime, actually. It feels like I'm working on some sort of weird hybrid Western uh, cartoon. Yeah. That actually is a perfect segue into my next question, which is that uh, All Might is an extremely American character. Uh, his most powerful attack is the United States of Smash. That's oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, really? This is awesome. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. Because uh, uh, I was joking with him earlier that if he uses more than 50 attacks, he'll have to start using, like, because uh, I thought they were only going to be states. Mm. Like uh, sorry, Texas and you. like sorry. no, it's okay. I was worried that he had to use like territories, yeah. like uh, you had just Cuba. U.S. sanctions. Yeah, exactly. Cuban smash. Um, uh, what did you say? Like Dominican Republic <laughs> smash. Dominican Republic smash. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what's it like being uh, an American in a Japanese industry? Uh, it. Well, you're actually asking an interesting person because I was in anime before I hardly knew what anime was uh, back in. 1998, when I was working at Funimation, it was a really different place. Like Funimation now, uh, not the not the website, but the the, the Funimation as it exists now, um, is a company that really respects and kind of honors the the tradition of Japanese anime, and they really are very conscious as to what the translation is and how that and how that influences the story. But when we were working on Dragon Ball at first. It, there were none of those people at Funimation. Uh, they were just trying to get a show called Dragon Ball Z on television in any way possible. And since in the late 90s, there, was, there wasn't as much of a, a mainstream market for anime. The, the goal was to just change it to make it as American as possible. And while that was liberating and fun, we also realized over time that we had kind of bastardized the story a little bit, which is why it was nice so many years later to go back and work on Dragon Ball Z Kai uh, because that allowed us to take the purest approach that Funimation has now um, at, with an anime that we kind of butchered before so it's it's weird I tell anybody who has worked in anime a long time to take a trip to Japan because it's like stepping into a place that you're really familiar with without ever having been there before like you, you walk around you're like oh that's Yeah, that's what the school in Yu Yu Hakusho looks like. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, oh, that's what food looks like everywhere. Yeah. Um, so I feel I feel really comfortable in this medium. I still feel like I have so much to learn. And if I wasn't working on anime so much and other things so many it's so much, I would actually take the time to learn Japanese because I've met so many amazing people that I just can't communicate with. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my question for Justin yes. is, uh, who's your favorite superhero? My favorite superhero, hmm. see I've been going back and forth recently. Mm -hmm. uh, working on this has sort of made me reevaluate what I'm looking for in a hero. Yeah. It used to be Batman, through and through. Loved him, but I loved him for his villains, you know? I loved that he was so just dark and bad that he had to bring all his villains up to his level and turn them into monsters, basically. Let's say now I would go with uh, the Incredible Hulk. I think he's really fun. <laughs> That's a good answer. Thank you. Yeah. All right, It's just uh, fun to have at parties. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Do the Hulk thing. Come on. Like Hulk. Yeah, Hulk. I don't, don't want to. I, I don't know. Piss him off a little bit. <laughs> right. so funny. That, that's just like the other next question I was going to ask, which is, which line are you totally sick of people trying to get you to do at conventions like this? Oh, wow. Uh, there was a time about 14 years ago where these people started coming up to me and saying, like, 
say over 9,000, man. Say over 9, <laughs> just say over 9,000. I'm like, why? And he goes, just say it, just say it. And then finally, it got to the point where I'm like, I need to figure out what the heck they are talking about. This is some sort of inside joke that might be on me, so I need to figure this out. But yeah, I have the, I've been asked that so many times and for so long that it's actually become known in the industry that it's kind of almost uncool to ask me anymore about uh, about that. Pete, like even fans are so aware that, and I respect it. I say it because I found that like trying to explain to someone that I've said it a million times it takes a lot longer to explain than just say something and make people supremely happy with it. So. You know, while on the one hand it is annoying, on the other hand it's just something that pe- resonates with people, and I just don't want to, you know, rob them of that experience, even yeah. if it breaks my voice. A yeah, bit. I saw a guy with that on a shirt, and I just thought, Damn. <laughs> yeah, Still? Really? it happens. Still? It happens. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, um, I have one more question for Justin. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, one look at your Twitter reveals that you are a fan of Overwatch. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, who's your favorite character? Do you have any tips for people who play that character? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I haven't been playing as much recently, but I did play pretty heavily during like the first beta and mm-hmm. when it first came out. I played a lot of Soldier seventy six because I think he's pretty easy to pick up and he fits in a lot of teams. Mm-hmm. And I've been playing Zenyatta because I find his serenity very soothing. Yeah. If you play Zenyatta, um, my advice would be don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's Fair all enough. I can think of. It never ends up well for me. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, one last question for uh, both of you. Uh, as fans of the show know, the quirk is the name for the special power inherited by characters in the show. So what quirk do you have? Do we actually have? Yeah. Like, uh, like, if I... Uh, let's see. Um, man. Do you have... If you, if you know yours, go for it. Because I'm trying to think, like... Uh, I have this quirk of being able to accidentally offend people uh, by telling people like really, really hard truths. So I have this like this truth quirk where I'll tell someone, so, yeah, I, I'm, people who know me call them like jellyfish stings, but I'll be like, man, it is awesome. Like it is so cool that you can just wear anything and look good in it. And so people are like, oh, I'm wearing just anything. Thanks. I appreciate it. So I don't know. What's your... What's your quirk? Hmm. My quirk would be... Uh, <laughs> I, I do, I guess, in the past, I, I've had sort of a problem where uh, electrical devices die on me mm. pretty easily and randomly. So, you know, I didn't ask for this power, <laughs> but I have it. Uh, and don't keep electronics away from me for sure. your safety. All right. Awesome. Yeah, that's all I have. So uh, thank you guys for... Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Love Can the get... name of your website. Thank it's you. It's amazing. I didn't come up with it, but I work there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you come up with no. it? No. My no. boss didn't come up with it. Who wow. came up? I don't know. I don't the know. Just the universe came up with it. It just existed. It just suddenly... Wow. Nice. <laughs>